Torsey Clark was a natural winner. He came to win. He knew how to win. And, you know, it's one of those stories that, you know, when you're involved, you don't really see the big picture. You don't see the dynamics until years later. And I'll share a quick story with you. In my career, I was lucky to be involved in athletics around the country and the continent and the world, obviously, with uh, the Nautilus Company. And I got to speak uh, on the clinic circuit with the top coaches in all sports, football, wrestling, baseball, basketball, and track and field. The basketball coaches, it was amazing. I was with all these top coaches in Division I NCAA champions. And it, about two years into it, I realized Orlando does not realize what they have in Torchy Clark. He was, he was way ahead of his time. And I look back and I look now, everything was related to the game like you play it. He had it broken down so systematically, but yet he was so intense. And uh, the man was just unbelievable ahead of his time. And Mike, can you just you know, share with us some more of the accomplishments of the program during your father's era? Well, Torchy came from uh, Appleton, Wisconsin, where he was uh, one of the top coaches in Wisconsin. And uh, I think he had a record in high school of, in basketball of like 178 and 14. And then his football record was like 69 and 8 or something like that. But, uh, and then he came to UCF to start the program, uh, actually FTU, in uh, 1969. And uh, there was no gym, no scholarships, uh, really, really nothing. We wore, uh, you know, reversible jerseys, you know, black on one side, gold on the other side. We, you know, played in high school gyms. Uh, my mother, uh, you know, washed the uniforms out in the, in the garage. The balls were in the garage, the uh, first aid kit. And uh, it was kind of a nomad program in the beginning. And, uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun, and establishing the program was unbe unbelievable, and playing with Russ and Rudy Jesse and Don Mathis, and it, it was a great time. Just tell us about, about that, the, uh, the Rollins UCF series back in the day. Uh, that was really kind of like a, a Carolina Duke series. Uh, I mean, that was on local TV. I think it was Channel 35. And uh, uh, we would actually come out for warm-ups, you know, just to do a little stretching, do a little shooting, and, you know, have a manager rebound for you an hour and a half before the game. And the, the place was sold out. And there was uh, – I still remember some of our subs came out and, and to shoot for warm-ups, and they were nervous because there was like 3,000 people in the stands watching them, uh, you know, take warm-up shots. But uh, it was a tremendous, tremendous uh, rivalry. And, uh, you know, when I look back, at, at those were really special games. Absolutely. In fact, looking back to the program we did with Torchy last year, which was his first med last media appearance, I asked him what, what his personal highlight was, and he said a game against Rollins where uh, – Rollins was up by about, I don't know, 20 or 30, 25 or 30 points. 22. Or and uh, Parsons, who was their star, whose son is at Florida now, made a, made a good shot and kind of, you know, taunted the UCF bench on the way back down the court. And Torchy said, we're, we're going we're gonna to beat you. And uh, UCF you know, pulled it out the end. Well, it was an amazing story, too, because there was no shot clock back then, no three-point shot. And we were down 22 points at Winter Park High School. Uh, which seats about 3,000, uh, you know, there was no UCF arena. And uh, it was uh, uh, Kelvin Lingelbach was really kind of like uh, the hero of, of that game. He was just unbelievable. I think he had 30 points. And uh, it was, uh, we, you know, we cut it to 18, we cut it to 16, and Rollins kept thinking they were going to win. And then all of a sudden it went into overtime. And then we won the game, I think, by 15 in overtime. So, it, and it was against a very, very well-coached Rollins team by Ed Jucker who won a national championship at Cincinnati. Now, it's part of your background, as we uh, alluded to briefly before, from 1996 to 2007, you were part of the University of Florida basketball program as assistant to Billy Donovan. Uh, you were an integral part of building that program to where they won two back-to-back -back national championships. Can you share your philosophy of, of how to build a winning, consistent NCAA tournament level program? Well, it starts with people. Uh, and I think we got great people at the University of Central Florida, UCF. We got great leadership there and in, in our athletic department and our president. And, and I think we had a great staff. Uh, and in doing that, now you got to go out and get the people here to put on the bus. You know, we always talk about getting, you know, high character kids who love to play an up-tempo style who we feel are good uh, students as well and can graduate and, and we can win championships and, uh, you know, graduate student athletes. And I think the up-tempo style is, is one that I've been fortunate to be a part of for, for many years at Florida. And it's always been something 
something I've had a great interest in. And, you know, last year at Marshall, we were one of the top 10 teams in the country in scoring. And I think that's what we're going to look to build here. Uh, it's going to be a different style than what they played in the past. And we know that in teaching that right now, as we're doing, uh, our guys are playing in a hurry a little bit more than fast right now. But it's going to take a little time to build that. Uh, but we've we've brought some new guys in here, I think, can help our program and give us some great depth and, and I think a style that people get excited about.